let's get it. This is going to be an exact video on how you can book 10 to 15 booked calls for your agency. No BS. Let's get into it. Firstly, sell the experience, not the journey. You know, everybody wants to go on a vacation, but nobody wants to know about the 16 hours that they're going to have to spend on that plane. Right. So let's bring it back into agency slash business terms. So if you're going to sell someone something, you shouldn't be selling them the process. They generally just don't care about it, you know, period. Right. And if anything, it will just be demotivating for them. The key thing is, is that you have to sell the solution, aka the result, that lead, that prospect, the avatar, they're at point A right? You've got a process, which honestly, they don't want to know about. Of course, you know, when's the interest, they're going to know a little bit about it. But in order to get that booked call, in order for your messaging and your offer, you've got to position it around position B, part B, aspect B, which is what your solution, your result is. And after, you know, doing your process, they're going to get to this aspect, position B, which is your solution. So sell that, sell the experience and don't sell your process, aka that journey. Next is your service name right? Give your service or services a unique and appealing name instead of a generic one, such as Facebook ads. Prospects have heard of these terms countless times and they're just bored and uninterested. So give your service an attractive name or just something that isn't been used before, right? So with my name, I picked the name because it's heritage, right? I picked it because it's to do with myself and me only. Like if people ask me why I picked my name, I have a definition. I have a meaning behind that. And I can tell someone that and I'll be like, okay, that makes sense. And you know, they'll, they'll see that. Right. So it can either be intriguing or it can either just be a name that allows them to be like, okay, you know what? This is different. Let's hop on a call because the key thing is everyone has brains, right? Humans have brains. And the key thing is you're just tapping into a psychological part in there. So when you have an attractive name or a different name, that's not the same as everyone else. They're just intrigued. Just hop on a call just to see what you have to offer. Next is identify your ideal customer very specifically and appeal to their desires and their interests. It is crucial to clearly define your ideal customer. You know, you'll be doing all of the marketing and all of the messaging to that avatar specifically. And if you misidentify your target audience, your message will fail flat. So here are the key things you've got to do. Number one, research the hell out of your avatar. Learn more about their interests their age, you know, where they get their news, their hobbies, do they travel? Where do they live? You know, what do they want most? Do they need more cash flow? Do they want to spend more time with family, do more activities? You know, and there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more questions. And I can literally, if you ask me, I'll send them to you and keep answering them, right? Literally spend one day just answering all these questions. And, and it's not just a one day job. Okay. You know, the more closing calls to do, you know, the more cold calls you do, you know, the more your team does stuff, every single day see that and you can improve this and constantly once a week or at least once a month make it better and better and better because you know if you start a new agency today what you know about that i did audience is brand new fresh right you could base off what's online but you don't know because you haven't done anything in that space but let's just say someone like myself for example who's been in the space for three years and I know that, you know, that niche specifically, then I know every single pain point. And month after month, I'm always changing what I'm doing. And that's the key thing. Month after month, make it better and better and better. Because six months down the line, you'll know six months worth of knowledge of that specific target audience, which no one else does. And you can make your process better. You know, your messaging and your marketing based off that. Okay. Next is offer is key. You know, your offer. Right. So how quickly and these are some questions, I wanna, you know, you need to answer you know, yourself. Right. Is how quickly can you deliver results? Do you offer a tangible guarantee? How much effort can you save them? Do your systems provide significantly better outcomes than other programs out there? And finally, the less experience you have, which is very key because everyone's like, well, I don't have experience. Well, everyone started off with experience, sorry, without experience. Right. Like I started off with zero experience all the top gurus and all, just everyone out there who started off in this space had zero experience when they started out. So, you know, if you're less experienced or have zero experience, then your offer should be more performance based because that's the best way to go around it because it's safe for the client. As long as first you have to present it well, right? And like, if you just have a performance based offer and you don't do this and you don't do the next steps or the before steps, it doesn't work. Because the client has to believe in you and you have to believe in the client. And that's the best way you guys are going to scale. Because you could do a performance base, work for three months. You've got them zero results. You've wasted your time. You waste their time. It's a loss on everyone's side. And what's the point? 
right? You've got to spend one of those months really identifying your client avatar, doing a bunch of calls, testing a few things out. Month two, run the process, took three clients on on a performance base, helped them all out, made money after that, and then put them monthly retainers, you know, think of it, right? And again, these are just five questions. Like I said here as well, there's more questions you can ask yourself, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And again, you could optimize them as time goes on after you hop on more cold calls, more closing calls, more outreach strategies and what the consumers are saying. Because here's a key thing. Do not base your offer around the market. Sorry, I said that wrong. That's right. So basically, you have a market, right? Whatever your niche is. Don't change the market towards your offer. So what I'm saying is don't create your offer and then whatever the market is, don't change the market to your offer because it, that is, that's literally a equal sign with a cross next to it. It doesn't work, right? So the key thing is you've got your, you know, your market now, your offer has to be changed and altered specific to market. Like my offer, I probably changed it countless times. I can't even count them, right? Because the market, yes, it changes, but we don't change it. We have no control in that. The market changed itself and we have to adapt to offer based on that. If you have a killer offer and you target to the wrong market, it's not going to work, right? Next thing is be different. Don't just follow the blind, right? So do your market research, see what everyone is offering, and then learn what the commodities of that actually is. So listen to everyone and see where they've been scammed before, right? And you can actually tap into their pain points. And again, this links to ideal customers and not just ideal customers, but offer and ideal customers and also anything above, because the key thing is you need to know about them. And like I said before, you know, you should know more about them than they know about themselves, right? Of course, they're going to know more about themselves in theory, but if you can say, repeat everything to them about themselves on the call, then, because here's the thing, let's just say you work with plumbers as an example, right? Every single plumber is similar. Yes, they've got a couple of different things, but they're very similar, right? So the key thing is, is that Make sure you tap into their pain points and then ask about their experience and then position yourself differently from the others and, you know, as a superior, if that makes sense, right? Next is when hiring anybody for outreach, incentivize based on performance. Of course, you know, let, let's do it this way. Let me ask you a question. If you got hired on an hourly pay versus a performance pay, which would you work harder for? Like, just think about that for, for five seconds. <laughs> so key thing is, it's very simple, right? You know, you would rather go for the performance pay, okay? Like, yes, you know, a lot of people out there want hourly pay, um, but the key thing is, is that you got to think of it, right? If if you, if I was on a performance pay, I would want to work so much harder because I know that the limit, I, the money I can make is 100 times, if not 1,000 times more than the hourly pay because that's the pay I get, right? And let me just outline my payment structure specifically for cold calls because, of course, that's a, you know, a key strategy that you're all using. Right. So I pay my call callers in three different departments. Number one, every time they book a call. Number two, every time that a booked call becomes a client, I pay them. And number three, if they hit certain KPIs, as you can see, I incentivize on performance. So if they're killing it, I give them bonuses. I give them more, you know, you know, cash and all these different things so they can stay with me because the long term is better. If you work with someone for six months and then you get, you know, and they go, you know, it's going to take you at least along and you know you, you probably need 10 cold callers to replace them right 10 brand new cold callers to replace them if that and the amount of time and effort it's going to take it's not worth it right so incentivize based on performance and i guarantee you the results the books I mean, like you can literally get 10 to 15 books calls from one cold caller a day only it's very doable right very very doable and i've had days where i've just done cold calls like 200 300 dollars a day and i've been able to do that right and i'll create further videos on those specific criteria later on so hopefully that makes sense. Next is track everything. What gets measured gets managed, right? So you cannot know what is working and what isn't without sufficient volume. So you could easily do, you know, again, we'll stick to cold call. And you could easily do 50 cold calls and you might be like, oh, the market doesn't work. Let me just change this. Or let me just do this. Or my offer doesn't. Let me just change this. But you might have called the wrong leads. Your lead generation might have been bad. Your opening script might have been bad your you know you might have been using like a blocked number there could be so many different variables so you have to do a shit ton of volume and actually track every single department of that you have to watch everything right and that's what you have to fine tune at the end of at the beginning of each day at the end of each day look at what's going on and track every single thing you know look is a factor 
And after a certain amount of time, it just gets watered down. So one day you might do 50 calls and you might get maybe 10 calls, but you might literally get 10 calls booked. That's luck, right? You might be amazing at sales, but it could just be luck. The following day you do 20 because you think you're so confident, you book zero. You have to do volume and then you have to track everything and change everything based on what the results are saying. Don't change what you think is best because of course you are experienced, you know, you're human at the end of the day, you know what's best, but change it based on the results. And if you're going to make an important decision, run the numbers first and then change it. Next is volume negates luck, right? That's the key thing. So you can't stop after 100 cold calls, try a thousand. And the key thing I'm trying to put is that you cannot make business decisions without sufficient volume. If you make 10 cold calls, you cannot make any decision based on that. Even after 100, you will still have more data to switch something about, but still that isn't enough. You should be doing a bunch every single week and based off that, based off that volume, then you can make changes, right? And that very, these two kind of go hand in hand, right? They go hand in hand together, track and do volume. And based off that, you can make any specific changes, right? Because the key thing is looks one thing and being consistent and getting the results is another thing. And that is what's to be consistent because again, you might make 30K in a month, but if you've done that purely on look and not having the right metrics to back it and six months down the line, you're literally on your feet, full flat, you know, back to square one, right? So build something that's going to you know last for a while and track everything. And based on what the market says, then change it. Next is strengthen your acquisition channel. And again, just to be clear, every single point I've said here, they all intertwine. If you just work on the offer and don't do ideal customer or don't make a sick uh, you know, service name or don't sell the experience, it's not going to work, right? Everything works hand in hand. So make sure you do every single department in order to scale what you're doing. You can easily scale, you know, at, you know, with what you're doing. If you're making 10K a month, you can easily get 20K by just doing a small couple of things here. But if you do everything here, I guarantee you, you will go to huge, huge heights because this is the basics that's going to help you to go from here. And of course, we'll create further videos and sections to allow you to get to even, you know, bigger departments and allow, and you know, we'll go more specific to each of these, like specific tracking. I'll, you know, I've literally got tracking sheets and everything and I'll go and I'll go more in depth on that on the videos to come. Right. But anyway, strengthen your acquisition channel. So apply that theory of constraints to identify and address bottlenecks in your acquisition process. For example, if your cold call pitch isn't resonating and leads to hangups, it's a constraint that needs fixing. Likewise, if your target audience dislikes Zoom calls, consider alternative methods, you know, sorry, consider alternative methods to engage them efficiently and effectively. That's the key thing. So again, when you're doing that volume and when you're tracking everything, there will be constraints that come up. Even if you're making 100K a month, there'll be constraints that come up, right? And based off those constraints, you can then change certain areas to make what you're doing more effective and to allow what you're doing to resonate and allow you to scale your agency. And finally, more you can charge. This is called the risk ladder. The key thing is that the further down of the value funnel your offer is, the more you can charge. And what do I mean by that? You know, you might ask. So the value funnel is essentially the sales process. And there is a lead, like think of it this way. There's a lead going through that value funnel AKA they're going through the sales process. And let me give an example, for example, for a kitchen remodeling company, let's just say I run an agency and I'm targeting a kitchen remodeling company. Here is what the risk ladder is just for a kitchen remodeling company. Firstly, a lead opts in on a landing page, usually a lead magnet framed as a free kitchen quote. Then the appointment gets booked with the contractor to build rapport with the lead and visit the home to see how much it will cost to actually do the kitchen remodel. And then from there, the appointment then becomes a close as the lead is happy with the price and the contractor gets paid. This is the risk ladder. Okay, it was a bit of a long video. I know it's been like 15 minutes or so into the video, but this is the 11 steps you can use to actually book 10 to 15 more booked calls for your agency, right? Like I've said this multiple times, do not change one thing right? Change every single thing you're seeing here and implement everything here. You might have already done half this or 75%, do 100%. And there might be aspects that, and again, like I can't fit everything into it. Like I want to keep this as short as possible. So I don't want to keep it too long, right? But the key thing is I would have, I'm trying to keep it as much summary, but there's so much more in depth. 
I'll be creating more videos, more and more in depth on different departments and very specific areas, right? Like ideal customer, your offer, uh, tracking, you know, hiring people, all the different areas. I'll be creating more and more on that, but hopefully this gives you a good um, overview on exactly how to book 10 to 15 more calls for your agency. I appreciate your time. If you want to link to this document or just anything else in general, feel free to reach out to me on my IG, you know, all be in the description below and yeah, let's get it.